Doctor Ratio is broken. Best Doctor Ratio guide and build. Best relics, teams, and light cones. HSR. Well, Braxophone. I will be the judge of that as the number one free-to-play Dr. Ratio user. Let's see how good this guide is, buddy. There were plenty of disasters to occur after the founding of the United States of America. Okay. One of the most major... <laughs> okay. What is happening? All right. Yep, you're right, Braggs. Okay. It may not have been a natural disaster, but it was an economic one on a massive scale, leaving many countries even outside the U.S. almost as devastated as Genshin players when they heard Star Rail was giving out a free five star. <laughs> what's an anniversary, dude? Star Rail is just... Yeah, but they got Aloy. So what's the problem? Isn't that good enough? What do you mean? I mean, Dr. Dr. Ratio is going to be bad. That's why they gave him to you for free. We have Aloy, man. It's the same thing giving us free stuff every Tuesday. Dr. Ratio is the new imaginary hunt unit, and he's here to give you a free education. As okay. I. Because today, I'll be teaching you how to play and build Dr. Ratio so you can use this ridiculously powerful five-star to clear the hardest content. My name Hell is yeah. Phone, and let's talk about Dr. Ratio. Yeah, baby! Show me what he can do, Brax. So if you've been to college or around college students, you no. probably know that textbooks out. are way overblown in price and made mandatory most of the time in order to pursue higher education. Well, luckily for you, the only one you need in Dr. Ratio's class is the one he's going to bludgeon you with. A book isn't an effective weapon, so you should always skip his basic attack and ought to use his skill. Dr. Good. Ratio's skill is high single target damage, and with the help of his talent, he has a 40% fixed chance to land a follow-up attack that deals a ton more. Every debuff that the enemy has will increase the fixed chance by 20%. I can't watch all of these MOC like 12 tryhards try to go for zero cycle and absolutely lose their shit when their doctor ratio just never fucking follow up attacks until they break their fucking PC. I will not be trying that. I will use him for fun. Okay? If he doesn't follow up attack, it's fine. But you know somebody's gonna try and think, oh well if I just do it a million times and I get the follow attack, then bottom big bottom boom will be good to go and it will never happen. At least it better not happen. I can foresee the person who just raided me, Mr. Pokey, also uh, befalling that same fate. Meaning that with just three debuffs, you will always land a follow-up. And if he's taking what? massive damage... Is that how that works? Sent. Meaning that with just three debuffs, you will always land a follow-up. And if he... See, that's why I'm glad I watched this, because I never even read it that way. Okay, that's fucking nuts! take massive damage from the follow-ups the same way that I took massive emotional damage from professors following up on the homework I didn't turn in. When you use his skill, there's actually two traces that massively buff his damage potential. The first one gives him a base chance to reduce enemy effect resistance, yep. which essentially gives him a debuff to use for free to proc his follow-up. And his other trace gives him a crit rate and damage buff based on the amount of debuffs an enemy has. It stacks up to six times, and the real kicker is that this buff is useful for the entire fight. All of his crit rate and crit damage That's buffs insane. stick around for the entire fight and for all of his abilities. So you don't actually need to hit someone with six debuffs to max it out. You can hit someone with three debuffs twice. This man is sculpted like a Greek god. He definitely doesn't need all six debuffs. Wait, that's once. actually insane. Is that if okay, so okay, so here's what comes down to: what counts as a debuff, right? So like, let's say if you break someone's shield with a fire, surely that counts as a debuff, and then like a shock debuff, and then like what a defense break, and then that's three of them, right? Okay, so so dots and like stat stat lowerers count as debuffs. Okay, that should really not be that hard to get, to be honest. So let's see, like Pela, AoE defense break, and then Kafka, AoE electrocute. I'm pretty sure she can do that twice. If you defeat an enemy with his skill, his follow-up will actually target another random enemy. So yeah, it's really good. Really losing damage from defeating enemies in the first place. It's really good. Due to his doctorate in Giga Chatology, he's able to drop a Greek pillar on an enemy <laughs> with his ultimate, dealing a ton of damage and applying a buff that lasts for two triggers. Actually, it's insane. Whenever a teammate attacks an enemy that has the buff from his ultimate, it'll trigger a follow-up attack from Doctor yep. Ratio. I also love that in this animation, he's literally hitting enemies with an L plus ratio. <laughs> his entire so good. is just massive damage from follow-up attacks, but I. Really wish he would just follow up with me. Doctor Ratio also has a trace that increases his damage dealt to targets that have. Do you think there's a single gotcha content creator that's in a healthy relationship? I truly just don't believe it. Like, how are you supposed to be in a healthy relationship when all you do is fantasize about being with anime women? I feel like they're just faking, or they just don't realize it yet, man. And, and if and if they are, it's because they're not deep enough into the gotcha sweat yet. I mean that genuinely. Have debuffs on them, increasing by ten percent. Just look at the Kari, man. 
Look at the Kari. There's just no fucking shot. There's no way. And for every debuff, as long as they have at least three. Keep in mind too, damage over time counts as debuffs, so it's really not hard to max out all of these traces. Lastly, his technique creates a statue. Wait a second, is that a JoJo? Unless they're like dating like a cosplayer, right? And then they can just dress up as like the anime characters. Otherwise, there's just no fucking way. There's absolutely no way. A reference. If you enter a battle with enemies in range of the statue, you'll have a base chance to reduce enemy speed, thus giving you a debuff or doctor ratio to use, and also allowing you to attack more that before move is taking so any sick. damage. Due to his ability to find the hypotenuse of a triangle, and also throw chalk like nobody's ever thrown yeah. anything before, this man does <laughs> insanely high damage, and he's absolutely free. I can't believe that, by the way. That's insane. I I'm still not over it. Well, no, because it makes sense, because that's how it should be. Okay, it literally cost... Hoyo versed zero dollars to give us this. That's what we want you to remember, okay? I don't even want to say, oh, it's crazy. Can't believe we're getting it for free. It's pixels. They can give it to us for free if they want. It literally costs them nothing, right? Now, it will get rid of potential profit, but with how much insurge and relevancy giving Dr. Ratio gave them, that is an infinite amount of advertising space they did not have a prior. This is still a net positive. And Gotcha Games should take note that you can do this and not completely fuck over your sales record. It is a very smart business decision they decided to do. And the Honkai Star Rail community deserved it because they're fucking great. His traces, make sure to focus on his talent for the most damage, okay. then skill, and then his ultimate. Next I wouldn't up, have done let's that. Talk about okay, I didn't think of that. Learn how to deal maximum damage with Dr. Ratio's really long, hard, rock hard, in fact, wide, girthy pillar. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you got me looking at his finger. It looks weird as shit. God, he's so hot. Okay, I need to know if the four piece follow up set is good or not. I have a feeling it's not. I have a There's feeling not it's terrible. many things to think about when you're playing Dr. Ratio. Right. Most of the time, you just sit back and enjoy being degraded by a muscular scholar. Everything yeah. about this character is a W, including his relic. Because a lot of options for him are shared with other characters, meaning you may not even have to refarm. His yeah, until 2.0 comes out and the new set comes out. Because let's just be real, guys. Let's just keep it 100%. You know there's going to be two new artifact sets that come out in 2.0. And you know they're going to power creep a bunch of other shit. Most likely... If I were you all, I would be careful following dedicated artifacts for Dr. Ratio. I just would. I really, I would just be careful. Okay? Because the new set's going to come out. And there's going to be new sets. We haven't got one in a very long time. And, I, and it's probably going to be good for Dr. Ratio. So I would probably wait a week until the developer live stream. And then, and then, then I would grind. Best in slot with 50% in prison uptime or more is four piece Wastelander. But yep. if you're looking for a more general setup, you could just run two pieces of Wastelander and two pieces of Ash Blazing. That's what I'm doing. You give him 10% imaginary damage and 20% follow up damage, respectively. Yep. You can also give him a mix of speed or attack. Oh, sets, fuck and yeah. Four piece genius of brilliant stars is a top pick, especially. Oh, shit. I never thought of that. Speed and attack? Wait, actually? Okay, I didn't know that. That's really useful. Okay, fuck yeah. Enemies. Okay, I'll repurpose a shit ton. Decent against enemies without quantum weakness. Now keep in mind that we don't yeah. currently have a debuff centered relic set, and given Hoyoverse's history, they tend to release best in slot sets for characters after they've already been released. Yep. We also know that Panacone is next patch, meaning we'll get some new relics. So it may actually yep. be worth waiting to farm sets for Dr. Ratio until the 2.0 livestream reveal. There's a new relic set coming out in 2.0. You all should wait for it rather than grinding for Dr. Ratio. Use your off pieces you already have. Let's be real. It's coming. We all know it's coming. Just wait on farming. Okay? We all know it's fucking coming. I had a dream, guys. Feels what the new Pentacony relics will do. For planar sets, Firmament, Frontline Glamoth, Inertial yep. Soto, Space Sealing Station, and Rudolent Arena are good options. Fuck I yeah. definitely prioritize one of the first two, though. For main stats, it's yeah, really I don't have easy. them, so fuck 20 it. crit rate or damage body, speed boots, an imaginary damage sphere, and an attack rope. You can technically run attack boots too, but I wouldn't recommend it since speed is such a strong stat and also yep. lets you run Glamoth. For substats, just try to get a good one to two ratio of crit rate to crit damage Makes and get at least 135 speed. Easy. Here's the finalized build plan for free. You're welcome. Actually, thank Dr. Ratio. Don't thank me. Very easy. Yeah, we'll do that real quick. Yeah. Some people were telling me to run an attack percent orb. I'm glad to see that that was full of shit. 
I'm gonna just be running doctor w ratio on broken set. It'll probably still be fine. Weird. He's sort of too smart to take anything seriously, yet he's yep. also the type to call you out on minor spelling mistakes. If you pull for light guns based on their art, then you're incredibly based. But are we really gonna let the man with a rubber duck in his bathtub degrade us? Baptism of pure thought is his best in slot light gun. <laughs> it's, it's incredibly so strong on both him and other hunt characters due to its. Wait, are you telling me that the light cone that can cost me up to three hundred dollars is his best in slot? That's insane. I would have never thought of that. Massive crit damage buffs and bonus ultimate damage. The defense insane. ignore may not apply to. I'll be real. I'm using sword play, and that's it. Everyone, but free crit damage is free crit damage. But if you don't want to swipe, then be gone. Fuck! Since follow-ups are such a massive yep. portion of his damage, Topaz's light cone is great on him, and it's also really cute. Other light yeah, I also don't have that shit. Light cones like in the night and sleep like the dead. Yeah, I also don't have them them fucking shits either. They're also pretty good for their stat bonuses. Don't now, have sword it. play is a light cone that's good. good in theory against bosses. In fact, against bosses at S5, it's actually one of the best options for Doctor Ratio. Yep. But it can lose its effects when switching targets, so I. Well, then just don't switch targets. For a cruising in the Stellar Sea, or in his case, Stellar Tub, which is completely free to play. Otherwise, you can go with only Silence Just, Just mains, don't, or just don't switch spring. targets. Here's a Light Cone comparison for Dr. Ratio, just for your own reference. If you want to know if you should get Eidolons or his Light Cone, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Also keep in mind that- Bro, oh my god, the difference between having his signature Light Cone versus not having his signature Light Cone is like 30 fucking percent. That is insane. I'm still not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. Light cone rankings are something to change just based on the type of content they yeah. are simulated in. And these rankings may not be the end all be all. Oh, they, okay. That's S5. Okay. 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 So Bathroom of Pure Thought is like right here. And then Swordplay S5 I have is right there. So it's like, it's like 10%. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Fuck it. Okay. Oh, a lot team section. Pretty worried about Doctor Ratio and how restrictive he might be. Wait a second. A lot of folks are. I mean, the thing is, Doctor Ratio will be a character that only gets better with time, because until we get introduced to a fight where it is purely single target, then we will never see his full his full potential. Right? We need a fight where it is just one dude, and you beat the fuck out of that one dude. And if you do that, then you win. That is what we need to see. I'm pretty worried about Dr. Ratio and how restrictive he might be, so I want to tell you guys about all of the free-to-play friendly options you have, as well as some of the five-star options, just so that you can kind of figure out exactly what team you want to build for the Rat Man. Yeah. By the way, Dr. Ratio is, is the Rat Man, Sampo is the Rat. They're very different. With Dr. Ratio being a Hunt imaginary character, he's going to be a single-target damage dealer, which means that he can work well with single-target debuffers like Silverwolf, but I'm going to talk about that in a minute because I want to show you my favorite team first, which is going to be okay. Dr. Ratio, Topaz, Ron May, and Welt. I don't now, have that. I will say using Welt as the sole president preservation character in your party even though he's not at all preservation only works if you can break them and keep them constantly i don't have that i found that this team does a ton of damage and is actually suitable for memory of chaos especially this cycle but also in a way you don't even really need it for this memory of chaos because it's all debuff focused the idea with this is that topaz and numby apply proof of debt to enemies that counts as right. a debuff rule and maze rebloom kind of thing that delays enemy break recovery and stuff that is also a debuff and welt has two debuffs he can apply as well not accounting for dr ratio's personal debuff and also the ability to imprison and the ability to break all of these characters can apply a debuff in some way. And because okay. of that, you can have 100% uptime on Dr. Ratio, which honestly just feels That's pretty insane. nice to use. Topaz and Numbi are going to enhance Dr. Ratio's follow-up attacks. Roland May is going to buff the damage of both Topaz and Numbi and Dr. Ratio. And keep in mind that Topaz is a DPS, even though she is sort of enhancing Dr. Ratio here. So you're running a dual DPS comp that are- See, I was going to use Kafka, Pela, Dr. Ratio, and uh, Ruan May. That way I get the attack buffs, I get the increased break, I get more debuffs, I get the defense breaks, and I always do my follow attacks. I mean, that, that, that's that got to be good, right? Why Kafka? For, for the debuffs. For the AoE debuffs. And then I just put do and then I put Dr. Ratio on one guy, and then he just hits that one guy over and over and over again. Both hunt, both single target. Healer? Well, I don't need a healer if they're all dead. Target. And Welt's personal damage can also be really solid. So buffed by Ruan May, and it's even better. Overall, this team feels really solid to play. The only downside is that it's mostly useful for things like Memory of Chaos. But if you're going to go to like Simulated Universe without Abundance Blessing, or just play some yeah. Overworld, you would have to heal up periodically just because of the nature of this team not having yeah. a preservation character or a healer. So over time, your HP will drop. But for MOC, where you Bro, can just- Bro, 84k follow up attacks. That's insane. Now, alternatively, you can also just play a preservation or a healer, and that's totally fine too. Now, for other characters that you can use for debuff, 
debuffs, you can also play Pela and Gwenaifen if you're just looking yep. for some four stars. Pela will lower enemy defense, and you can even give her this light cone called Resolution Shines the Sparrow of Sweat, which is actually on my Gwenaifen. See, I told you. Give you a chance to decrease enemy defense, and that would also be another debuff that you can I jump. told you it was good. Gwenaifen applies dots, which are debuffs, by the way, if you're wondering. Yep. And she can also apply Fire Kiss to enemies, which is basically a vulnerability where enemies receive more damage to them, which is absolutely awesome. Yep. The Bard can freeze enemies, which I believe counts as a debuff the same way dots do. But if I'm wrong about that, I guess I'll toaster bath in game. And overall, you'll be able to get 100% uptime on Dr. Ratio's follow-up attack with this team. However, you don't have to use these characters. These are just two examples of four stars that you can use that can debuff. And Jopard being a preservation is nice because Dr. Ratio being a hunt wants to avoid taking damage. He's very, very squishy. And Jopard will prevent you from taking much of that. Now for my You know what they should do to fix Zila? They should give her a chance to proc her alt for free uh, whenever she kills another unit. Right, they should give her an extra turn and a chance to follow up attack with her ult. Right, so just like kill Zila in game, and then call her Embibitor Zila. Right, kill shit, go again, and free ult. It would be insane, bro. bro Seals vine? No, she's not. No, she's not. She needs to be better. She need, she needs to be way better. Why the fuck not, bro? I mean, I mean, if Doctor Ratio can throw a chalk, why can't she just go all eight times in a row? It's not really that OP, anyways. Yeah, Hersher of Rebirth, 100%. My next team, I want to talk about Silverwolf because Silverwolf no, alone can apply enough debuffs for Dr. Ratio I don't and care. more. Remember, this character can apply three different types of bugs that lower enemy attack, yep. speed, and defense. Don't give and a that shit. Is without accounting for her defense shred and for her weakness implant. So she can apply a ton of debuffs just by herself without even worrying about anyone else. Considering that Dr. Ratio will be primarily successful in yep. single target scenarios, Silverwolf is great for him because she is also primarily successful in single target scenarios, and these two together are fantastic. King Yoon is also just great for Dr ratio because she buffs attack and she gives energy and she gives damage bonus with her ultimate she can be a pretty sp positive character and then fushuan is just another example of a preservation just to try to relieve some of the stress that would be on dr ratio as a hunt character that's very very squishy now keep in mind you can play healers too i just like having a preservation because they have better taunt value now what other characters can you run with dr ratio well i'm glad you asked you can run Bronya because from what i was seeing in Good? Page, her buff does carry over through dr ratio's follow-up attack if he triggers it which means that he will be able to gain the damage bonus on his follow-up and overall she'll be a very strong option as she is with every other DPS in the game. You know what I do? I'm gonna just I'm gonna just use him without the debuffs. Cause I feel like he's good enough. I feel like I don't need anything more than that. I feel like he's fine, and I'll just hope. I'd rather just hope for the 40%. To be hey, you, hey, you do what you want. Hey, here's the thing, man. I'll just hit it. I'll just I'll just win the 4060. Because I'm not bad. Okay, I'll just hit it. Because to be honest, either it's a 50-50, either I get it or I don't. Let's be real, I'll always get it. And then you can sit there and go, uh-huh. You can sit there and say, Cope, when was the last time I missed a 50-50 on the gotcha pulls? I, I will have such consistent follow-up attacks for no reason. People think I'll be running more debuffs. Imigo can also apply I'm a gamble, burning, man. which is a debuff that you can use. And if you're running a dual DPS team, trying to get some AoE damage in there, Imigo can be okay for that as well. Not my favorite, but she does have a dot, which is debuff, so... And the last character I want to talk about is Hanya, because she's honestly kind of weird. For whatever she's hot. reason, the effect of burden doesn't yep. actually count as a debuff. I don't really know why. why is that? It says that you inflict or apply burden to an enemy, but it ultimately is more of a buff to your teammates. I, I don't really I don't really know why this is the way it is. Doctor Ratio is pretty flexible, but I do really like playing him with Topaz Numbi and Ron May. And because of the break extension, playing Ron May and Welt against imaginary weak enemies with Doctor Ratio feels really, really solid. So yeah, I think I fucked up. I think I really should have got Topaz. Like, I genuinely do. I genuinely think I fucked up so fucking hard, and I regret not pulling for Topaz every fucking day. Because I wanted her so bad, because she she's literally the second hottest character in the entire game. Obviously, number one's Kafka. Okay? But, dude, she's so good. Literally. I, I'm thinking about pulling for Topaz on the on the rerun meta. But the problem is, is the more I think about it, the more I realize I'm not pulling for Topaz, I'm pulling for Numbi. And I don't know if I want to do that. This is my favorite team overall, but he's a pretty flexible carry and can be played with most supports. Next up, let's talk about what you're sinking your money. Wait, next up, let's talk about the cost of free. Hell no. Hell no. If you were going to be pulling on Emmett South when Fuck he no. first dropped that bomb on us, then you probably have extra stellar jades lying around. Or maybe you just immediately spent it all on Blade's light cone. If you literally pull for Dr. Ratio's light cone, what was, what was even the point? of Honkai Star Rock giving them to you for free. Genuinely. Just take the goddamn take the goddamn character and don't pull for any Eidolons. Just don't. Please, God. 
Okay, because then because then your doctor you're not part of the crew anymore. You're making doctor ratio unrelatable when you have him in E6. It makes no sense. You can go for his light cone. Sure. Right, sure. But then like you don't uh, it's just an unrelatable doctor ratio and everybody's gonna look at you like you're a fucking idiot, right? Like you it's like you get a car for free, like you get like a fucking Bugatti car for free, and then you still try to soup it up. Well, Dr. It's just pointless. Eidolons are very strong He's fine. and drastically impact his damage, at least at the higher cost ones, not super early on, so just don't do it, explain. man. Because if he wasn't so good at E0, I might actually be mad about it. His yep. E1 gives him an additional four stacks of crit buff from his major trace, don't need and it. increases the maximum amount of stacks that you can have to 10 stacks, you don't need meaning it. that he can now get 25% crit rate and 50% crit damage, yeah, you don't need as it. opposed to 15% crit rate and 30% crit damage. You don't damage. need it. It's 40 extra crit value that doesn't come from his relics. Yeah, but think about it. Think about it. That's like that's like three hundred dollars for like one artifact that roll that went good, right? Like it doesn't even matter. Like you do, you literally don't even need it. Like it's pointless. You don't need that much damage. Making it a really solid buff you don't. to his damage if you have bad relics, and just a decent buff overall if you have good relics. Hell no. E2 is gonna be a buff to his follow-up attack based on the amount of debuffs an enemy has. Though it looks a lot better than it is. Decent damage increase, but nothing crazy. Yeah, it's garbage. Island three is the calm before the storm because Terrible. it's honestly super, super mid. It's an ultimate Terrible. and basic attack level up, one of which you'll never use, and the other which is not the super huge. Completely useless damage anyways. But then you get to to E4, which is crazy because it gives him 15 energy back for every follow-up attack triggered by his talent. Okay, then just run him on an energy recharge rope. Boom. You don't need it. It's useless. You don't need it. Do not spend money on Eidolons in this game. You don't need it. That's terrible. Which means that he's gaining 20 total energy on follow-ups from his skill yep. instead of 5. Garbage. But if you read his ultimate, it says to trigger his talent, meaning that follow-ups from his ultimate triggered also get the extra 15 bonus energy. That means when you use his skill and you proc a follow-up, you're gaining 50 energy per skill, and out of his turn, he's still gaining 20 energy from two teammates' attack, meaning that his ult can practically go off every two turns. This ultimate every two turns allows your teammates to trigger more follow-up, and thus the cycle continues of you getting more follow-up attacks and leading to more damage and more energy. And overall, it's just a massive increase. Absolutely bu Yeah, but it's for $1,200. There's not a scenario where you need that in the game. Everything is completely beatable free-to-play. You don't need to spend $1,200 so your Dr. Ray is going to have more uptime. You just don't. Busted idol. Bro, that's two PS5s, and people went to New York City and killed people for Kai Senat for that shit. You do not need that. Hold on, in my opinion. E5 is a skill and talent level up, which is also a decent damage increase. And then, of course, you have E6, which, when combined with his other Eidolons, over doubles his damage from E0. It increases the amount of triggers you have for free from his ultimate from two to three, meaning that you can follow up attack three times from teammates instead of two. In yeah. Yes. But the enemies are already going to be dead before Dr. Ratio needs double damage. You know you don't need double damage. If you get an E6 Dr. Ratio, you've killed the game for yourself. It's no longer going to be fun. You're going to take the strategy out of a turn-based strategy game. Just don't fucking do it for the love of God. I know I'm being a buzzkill, and that's because there's somebody watching this getting excited about all this shit. You do not fucking need it. E6 can cost you for this character $1,800. You do not need to spend money on gotcha games. Do not do it, please. In a team where everyone is roughly the same speed, you'll get a follow-up attack every single turn. E6 yep. also increases his talent's damage by 50%, which is pretty dang disgusting when you combine that with a follow-up every turn. Now, if you're wondering if you yep. should go for Eidolon nope. or his Light Cone, the answer is as straightforward as his reason for wearing an Alabaster Head. His Light Cone is a better choice no. than going for early Eidolons. E1 is nice for comfort when building him, but his yep. Light Cone is a pretty decent stat stick for most hunt characters, and on Dr. Rat specifically, it's a big power jump from his freedom play alternative. Dr. Ratio's Eidolons it's don't okay. get really OP until E4, and having this light cone, it's going to be a lot better than going for E1 most of the time if you have a decent relic setup. Just don't do it. Eidolons are fucking overkill. Let's watch a clip and prove it. Okay, I'll, I'll the host. Yeah, I'll watch the host. this. I'll the host. This is an E6 Dr. Ratio. Okay. 131. So basically increase... Yep. Um, it's okay. E5 S1, yep. normal follow-up was 110. Yep. E6 S1, normal follow-up is now 130. Yep. Our ultimate horse. God. Now let me just ultimate this dude. I want to see a benchmark. It's completely pointless. I want to see a benchmark first. Okay. 
So this is the enhanced follow-up damage on a weakness broken enemy. Okay. Here we go. Why the fuck do you need a follow-up attack to do 170,000 damage without Topaz buff? You just, you don't need that amount of damage in this game. You genuinely do not need that amount of damage in this game. You know it. 171. Honestly, not an insane amount of damage increase. It's honestly not that insane. Okay, that's cope. It is insane, but it's also completely pointless. It doesn't matter if you can do 2 million damage to a mob that has 5,000 HP. You don't need it. You never need it. You could zero cycle MOC 12 very easily if you do it, but you don't need to zero cycle. You have like 16 cycles that you can just take your time and it's fine. Don't spend money on Eidolons. Take your doctor ratio. It's fine with the, it's, it's fine with the herd of light cone. It's fine with sword play. Just take the unit. Okay. Take the unit. Enjoy it free to play and save for other units. So you get to save more money. Take care of yourself. Do not, do not lose these fucking companies. Do not lose like I did and spend all of your fucking money on this shit. Actually, it's 10. Okay, fucking whatever. Godless, be careful with your money. Be careful with your currency. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Braxophone, amazing video as always. Love highlighting your guides. They're really fucking good. And boys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to me and Braxophone. Appreciate you.